Amen. If you will, you take your Bibles and uh, you turn with me to Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verses 20 through 23. I think it's 23. We'll, we'll, we'll do 24. Keep it up. We'll do 24. Proverbs, the two, uh, fourth chapter, verses 20, because I may have wrote that down wrong too. Verses 20, verses 20 through 24. We are so grateful for the word of God. I'm not going to ask you to stand, but I'm just hoping you're standing in your heart. That's more than anything. You can stand physically, but yet you, in your heart you're not standing. I'd rather for you to stand in your heart than to stand on your feet. Amen. Amen. It's called honoring. And read this follow. My son, attend to my words. Acline thy ear unto my sins. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of of where? In your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. Keep the heart with, highlight this part, all diligence, all diligence. For out of, for out of it are the issues of life. We're going to say, put away from thee a, for, a, a forward mouth and Perverse lips put far from thee. But I want to go back to verse 23. Go back to verse 23 real quick. Keep thy heart with all diligence. And that's what I want to talk about from that thought. Diligence. <laughs> diligence. <laughs> diligence. I, <laughs> I had to be very diligent this morning for this message. Diligence. Amen. The Greek meaning for that word Diligence is to make effort, and it's on the board if you want to take a picture of it, to make effort, be prompt or earnest. To make effort, amen, to be prompt or earnest. And you know a lot of times, and let me say this, y'all, every last one of us in here, wherever it was, whatever it can be right now, just want to quit. Hello, somebody. I'm talking about diligence. There's sometimes you just want to throw in your hat. You want to throw in your towel. You try so hard, whatever it may be. You know, you, you, and even to a point, and I know that some of us are even questioning God. And I'm not saying that's, that's wrong to do, but what I'm saying, the wrong part to do it when you question God and don't have no faith. Amen. We think about diligence. We, we want to, you know, this life journey is diligence. Because life has a way of throwing all kinds of sliders and curveballs, if y'all familiar with baseball. <laughs> Something that happened. Come, I, you, I didn't see that coming. But yet I need to learn how to stand. I want to, amen. Diligence is a purposeful, calculated pursuit of consistency to hold one's course. Y'all want me to say that again because it's not up there. Okay. Diligence is a purposeful, calculated pursuit of consistency to hold one's course. Because the course as a child of God that you're on, it is not an easy course. Amen. Matthew, the seventh chapter, tells us that, that uh, broad is the way and narrow is the gate. Or the narrow way in the field is only going to find it. But, but I want to say to you this morning. That the course that you are on is the course that God has you on right now. And it, you may not understand everything that's taking place in your life right now. But I will say this. As echo what T.D. Jakes has said many years ago. Nothing just happens. Amen. Nothing just happened. Well. In other words, let me say it like this. In other words, it's a maximum sustained effort based on your commitment to God. I think I need to say that again. 
In other words, it's a maximum sustain, something you got to continue to, I got to sustain it at a maximum effort based on your commitment to God. In other words, you know, we, here's the problem, with, here's a, here's a problem that we have uh, uh, in the church. You got people get on the road, then you got people get off the road. But we got to maintain our capacity at a maximum level to stay on the course that God has for us. And nobody told you it was going to be easy. Matter of fact, when you got saved, no one ever told you that it was going to be easy being saved. It's actually, watch this, it's actually the opposite. What do you mean? It's the opposite. It's hard. But the, but the key to it is that God is there with us. And he helps us to get through whatever we have to go through. That's what's so good about God, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So I, I want to encourage you this morning, stay on, stay on the course, because watch this, because watch this. Because we're living in a day where people are dropping off. They're dropping off. They're dropping off because they don't understand some things. They're dropping off because they've gotten to a place that, I just can't go no more. No, I want to encourage you to hold on. Because the course that you're traveling, guess what? Somebody has already been there and they have conquered it. And I want you to know that guess what? God will not, God will not put things in front of you to see that you fail. He will put things in front of you to help you succeed. Amen? Amen. So, so my commitment to God comes, starts with, watch this, it starts with Hebrews 11 and 6. I want to read that real quick. Hebrews 11 and 6. Look what it say. But without faith, <laughs> it is impossible to please him. That's, that first part is very true. For he that cometh to God, listen, that means, watch this. That means I just can't come to God and stop. This is an ongoing thing. I got to keep coming to God. It's not that God, it's not that God is moving from us. I got to keep, uh, I got to maintain the effort towards God wherever, wherever God wants me to be at. That's where I need to be at. All right. So that he that coming to God must believe that what? He is. And that he is a rewarder, watch this y'all, of them that what y'all? That diligently seek him. Y'all see that, y'all? And see, when I saw, I saw, you know me, I'm, I, I play on words. I, I just, I, when I'm ministering, I play on words. And what jumped out at me was the word rewarder. Of course, there was a whole lot of stuff in there. But what jumped out at me is rewarder. When I defined it, the word rewarder, the definition of the word rewarder is paying what is due. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Paying what is due, which means that, watch this, God is a what? A rewarder. Where is my payment coming from? Not man, not people, not my job, not a situation or circumstances, not a company, not an organization, but my payment is coming from God. Oh, y'all not hear me right now. Yeah, you hang on in there. You're going to get your reward. God's going to pay you. I'm not talking about when you get to heaven, but I'm talking about why you on the earth right now. Huh? He is a diligent. He what? He's a rewarder to them that. You know what our problem is? We, get, we go so far and we say, I can't go no more. Yes, you can. You made it this far. You can keep on going. Because why? Because God will give you the strength to keep on going. My strength don't come from man. Hallelujah. My strength comes from the Lord. And God said, when you, I will reward you if you keep on seeking me. <laughs> if you keep on seeking me, I'm going to reward you. I know that it seemed like I hid my face from you. I know that it seemed like I turned my back on you, said the Lord. But God said, guess what? Keep on seeking me. Because he's a, he's a rewarder to them. That diligence. He's going to pay you your, what is due. You got, you got a payment. If I, can, if, I, if I will, in my own words, you got a payment coming your way. 
Uh, you ain't. You, it, it's not every, what you're doing is not for not, nothing. I, I'm gonna say it again. What you're doing is not for nothing. God's gonna reward you. You got your payment. Your day, y'all gonna help me. Your day gonna come. Listen, your day gonna come. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't give up. And don't lose heart. Your day is gonna come. Because why? How do I know that, Pastor? Because God's word could not return to him void, but he will accomplish it. What it's supposed to do. And I, can, I come and tell you today, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. I know. I know. And, and listen, I know that you said, man, I, I, haven't reached my, I haven't reached my pinnacle. No, you didn't. The way you reach your pinnacle is in Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith. I got to hold on, as the old folks say, to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. God's going to bring me through. And if you are in your Egypt, guess what? God got a promised land for you. You may be right on the edge of it, but God's going to allow you to cross over into your promised land. Because God cannot go back on his promises. God will fulfill his promises. Tell your neighbor, you got, you got what's coming to you. It is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, diligence, diligence is God's order to keep you faithful. Wait a minute, hold up. Diligence is God's order to keep you faithful. Because, see, you, you don't want to be faithful in season every now and then, every now and then. But as I continue to see God, it brings about my faithfulness to God. If you want to hold, you want to continue to stay faithful, continually to, fl to flow in diligence. Continue to just to hold on because that's God's order. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm always want to be in the order of God. That I always want to be in the plans of God. And if he's if, if diligence is is, is 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 one way that God keeps me faithful to him. Listen, you know, listen, I, I heard one old man say, guess what? He said, I ha I don't have no master's degrees and a BA degree in, in, in psychology. But I have neology. Right. That I know how to stay on my knees. I know I know how to continue to pray without ceasing. Amen. Yeah. So diligence is God's order to keep you faithful and watch this, y'all. Not only faithful, catch this, y'all, but fruitful. Right. Yeah. Y'all missed out. Yeah. His order to keep you faithful and fruitful. Because you know that he said, What? You shall what? Bear what? Some fruit? Much fruit. So as, as I continue to hold on and continue, listen, how you, how, look, when you look at a fruit tree, guess what? Ain't no fruit's gonna, gonna ain't no fruit's gonna, 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 ain't no fruit's gonna come off those branches if the branches don't continually to maintain. Huh? The same thing with us that, look, that I, I wanna bear much fruit. Because of my diligence. And I'm telling you, I just wanna, want you to know this. Just hold on and hang on there. Because guess what? Your change is going to come. Christians should be the most diligent people on the planet of the earth. Amen. I saw that. Watch this. So the world should look at us as an example of how diligent that we are. We ought to be the most hard. Listen, y'all. We ought to be the most hardest workers on our job, people ought to look at us. We ought not to be clocking in, listen, 15 minutes late. We ought not be clocking in 30 minutes late. It ought to be something about us that the world will say, I want that. I want that. That's diligence about this person. He comes to work. Watch this. I'm going to mess some of y'all up right now. He comes to work when he's sick. He, whoa, whoa. But if I go to work sick, I ought to come to church sick. Uh, you, you know how it is because some of us, we want to take Sundays off, but we'll work Monday through Saturday. Uh, I, I got, I got, I'm, going, I'm going there for a second, but uh, my diligence is that I, I'm going to come when I'm not feeling good. I'm going to come when I, I, feel, I, I feel like nothing's going right. I'm going to keep on coming because why? Because that's the sign of my diligence. Uh huh? Yeah, so we should be the hardest, most diligent people on the planet. We people ought to see the consistency in us in every aspect of our lives. You you hear me? You ain't got to talk about it. They'll see it. 
They'll know it. They, they, that brother there, I don't know what, I don't know what's going on with that brother. But when other folks are lagging, they ain't doing nothing on the job. That brother keep on being diligent. Look at, it. and they ought to be able to see us. But some of y'all, you you know, some of y'all is just like a sore thumb. They doing it? Well, I might well do it too. That's not where it's supposed to be. We ought to be different. It ought to be totally different about ourselves that the world can see the diligence about our lives. Look at the neighbor. Say, neighbor, I hope. You're not half-hearted when it comes to diligence. Yeah. But look, y'all, the opposite of diligence is, and watch this, the opposite of diligence is giving up. Yeah. Five warning signs that I'm giving up. <laughs> That's why I said God was all, <laughs> God know, God know what you, people, God know what y'all needed today. Five warning signs that I'm giving up. Number one, watch this one. This is dangerous. I don't care no more. When a, when a Christian say I don't care no more, they have given up on their prayers towards God. And I know you've been praying about this situation for a whole long time, but you can't give up. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. Yeah. I don't care attitude. Number two, this thing is a burden. This thing just, it's a burden. It's burdened me down. And I don't have to be burned down no more. I'm giving them a walking out of this thing right now. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's a warning sign. If you're there, that's a warning sign to get back on track. Number three, I'm done with it. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Yeah, I'm done with this. And watch this, y'all. Every last one of us have said at one time or another, I am done with this. See, see, some of y'all look straight ahead. You want to be all religious right now. Look, just look straight ahead because from the pulpit to the back door into the parking lot, all of us have said that I'm done with this. This, wherever this, this is in your life, I'm going to tell you, don't let that this stop you being done with it. Number four, stop pursuing. Remember, remember that thing you used to pursue? You pursuing the, the things of God, pursuing righteousness. You were pursuing that stuff, and, and then it don't seem like nothing ever changed. You ever feel like that? Dog, I'm, I'm going hard at this thing, and it just won't change. Watch this. I, it, it could be. It don't have to be. It don't have to be things in the Bible. It can be it's things in your life. I'm just trying so hard. What can I accomplish? Why can I not get to that place? You just, man, I'm just, I'm going to stop pursuing it. I can't, I can't do this anymore. And number five, most, the one, one of the most dangerous one is lost desire. You lost desires in the things of God, you should never lose the desire. Because when you lose the desires of the things of God, you go back to sinning. When you lose a, a desire of the things of God, you go back and living like a, a pagan and a heathen. You don't care. You know, I heard one sister say she, got, she was in a meeting, and uh, the meeting didn't go well, so she left and went to, uh, uh, I don't know, the Circle K, and she got her a drink. Well, you always wanted that. You always wanted that drink. That's why you were looking for an escape route to get that drink. Because why? Because your desire, you had the bad, bad desires. But I'm coming to tell you, don't lose whatever it is. Don't lose your desire. What if Jesus would have lost his desire when he was on this earth for us to save us? Because we all deserve to go to hell, but he never lost his desire from dying for our sins. Oh, I'm so... I'm so grateful today, y'all. I'm so grateful that Jesus never lost his desire to stay on the cross. Y'all know the scripture tells us that he could call a multitude of angels to get him off the cross, but he never lost his desire. See, when you lose your desire, you lose your love for that very thing. Lost desire. So what happened is diligence reveals my responsibility and my real liability. Y'all want me to say that again? Amen. Diligence reveals my responsibility and my real liability and my consistency. So the characteristics of diligence, I just, I'm, that's just an introduction. I just gave you an introduction. Let's go get into the meat of this thing. All right. The characteristics of diligence. Number one, watch this, my attitude. Mm. 
my attitude. <laughs> you know, I, I looked at this passage of scripture here, and it really just did some did, did some for me. If you will go to Luke the thirteenth chapter, verses ten through thirteen. Watch this. And he was teaching in one of his synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity mm, for 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. See, that's why you need to be in the right place at the right time. Because what if she would have gave up? Brother, what if she would have gave up coming to church? Y'all not going to help me this time. What if she would have gave up coming to church? All right. And he said unto her, her woman, <laughs> thou art loose from thy infirmity. Then it said, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Immediately. Immediately. From 18 years of being in a condition. I, I got to say this to help y'all. Of being in a condition. Guess what happened, y'all? She never stopped. And I'm, I'm going to say this for some of you to, to catch this. She never stopped coming to church. Hmm. Did y'all catch that? It was easy for her in her condition because we like to use our condition as an excuse. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to work with this now. This woman was like, I'm going to kind of give you an illustration of how she was. This woman was like this. That's all she can do. And look, y'all, it became a way of life, Jimmy. For 18 years, she was just like this. And you never see in the scriptures that she was making any kind of excuses. She wasn't complaining. She just kept coming to the synagogue. And watch this. Because every time she came to the synagogue, guess what? Jesus wasn't always there. But this particular, y'all going to help me in this house. But this particular time, Jesus showed up. And what if she didn't show up when Jesus showed up? Listen, y'all, I'm, I'm trying to go there for y'all. We Look, she came on in, and the Bible said Jesus saw her. He saw her, what? He saw not just her, he saw her condition. <laughs> because watch this, I want to go there for a second because this woman had an attitude, watch this, when I talk about attitude, an attitude of the little, the, 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 I'm sorry, diligence. You're going to come out. I'm playing on words, playing on me today. You better get me out here. Yeah. Amen. This woman had a diligent attitude. She wasn't going to give up. If I can, if I can say this in my Holy Ghost imagination, she probably thought that, well, maybe one day I may die like this, but I don't, but guess what? I'm going to still be committed to God anyhow, because watch this, because God don't look at your ability. God looks, y'all going to help me, at your availability. And while folks are sitting home, I, I can't never get this, because you go and see the, you go and see your, your personal doctor, but you never go and come and see your Savior doctor that's in the house. You'll go to your personal doctor. Y'all missing this, y'all. But you won't come and see your... Look at that. 18 years of pain and discomfort. Watch this, y'all. Was moved forward in her deliverance. See, that's why you can't put limitations on God. And you can't put God in a time frame or a time zone because God works outside of that and when God want to do what he's going to do he's going to do it but you got to make sure that you are at the right place at the right time with the right attitude because you can be at the right place at the right time with the wrong attitude you got to make sure those three works and come together because the Bible said a threefold core is not easily broken So she did not let her longevity condition stop her from moving forward. She was receptive as she came in the house. Receptive. She was very receptive to what Jesus was teaching during that time. Because watch this. Because you can have the right attitude but not receptive. See, all these got to play a major role in our lives. 
Because you could be in the right place at the right time with the right attitude, but not receptive. Ooh. Did y'all catch that, y'all? Right place at the right time with the right attitude, but not re- receptive. Because <laughs> God is, because why? You have to be receptive to receive from God. Because he spoke a word over her, and I can only see. Listen, in, the ho- in my Holy Ghost imagination, when she stood up, all kind of bones start popping. Because they had her. Had to restructure it this self because she'd been like that for so long. I'm, I'm preaching better than y'all saying anything. And I come to tell you today, new faith. I know it's been a long time coming. But I can, I can promise you this according to the word. It's going to come. <laughs> Everything has seemed like it's bent over in you. Oh, God help me. Everything that seems like it's been bent over in your life is about to straighten up sooner or later. God's going to straighten that thing up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm, about to run. I'm almost about to run in here. God is about to straighten that thing up. So number one, my attitude. Watch this, y'all. Number two, my addition. Yeah, my addition. You know, God wants to add stuff to our life. But stuff don't just jump on us. It comes through a period of... A, 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 a series in our life is called longevity. It's called diligence. If God want to, if, if, if things are not being added to your life, keep holding on. God's going to add some stuff to your life. Are y'all hearing me? Give me 2 Peter 1, 5, and 8. It says, and besides this, giving all, so I'm going to hold that. Giving all, boy, that's a beautiful note. Giving all diligence see y'all talk about yeah, y'all singing anointing oh <laughs> giving all diligence remember that giving all diligence watch this add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance Y'all don't like that one. Y'all, 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 y'all got a tie on it when, when you say faith, 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 faith. Yeah. <laughs> and to patient, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Mm-hmm, y'all know what it is. For if these things be in, watch this, be in you and abound, they make you that, I'm sorry, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. Unfruitful way, y'all. In the knowledge who? Of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's work with this for a second. Go back to verse 5. I want to read verse 5. Giving all diligence. That's the part I want to. I want you to let's work with that first. Giving all diligence. That means not giving up, pressing through the hurt, frustration, and disappointment. Given all, I want y'all to hear this. Given all diligence, I got to read it. I'll read it again. Not giving up, but pressing through the hurt. Oh, pressing through the hurt, frustration, and disappointment. Don't raise your hand, but how many of you have been disappointed within the last seven days? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Raise your hand. How many of you have been frustrated within the last seven days? Because that, that's part of life. But you got to learn how to watch this. Learn how to master your frustration. Oh, you're not hearing me right now. Because, see, when I master my frustration, then, then that means that now I have my frustration, and my frustration, come on, y'all, don't have me. In all diligence. I can't, oh, I can't. Look. So that means that it's progressive. And progressive means happening or developing gradually. Watch this, y'all. Or in stages. Now the ones I just told you, all that stuff you add into y'all, watch this. So in other words, when I read, when we read over verses 5 through 8, these are different stages that God want to add to our lives. Are you hearing me? When I'm diligent with faith, God will give me virtue. You, you, You hear what I'm saying? All these are principles that God has placed before us. Because watch this. That means that when you get saved, you don't have all of these. Mm. 
I'm not talking about saving faith, but I'm talking about learning how to walk in faith. When you get saved, you don't have all of these, and it comes over a course in a period of your life as you walk with God. It's progressive. There are stages that we have to go through to get to this point. And guess what? When we get through these points of stages, guess what take place, y'all? Guess what take place? Spiritual maturity. Y'all not going to help me in this house right now. Oh, my goodness. Let me read them again. Let me read them again. because I want y'all to miss this. Giving all diligence. Add to your what? See, add to your saving faith. Mm. Then it goes on. Say virtue. And to virtue, what? Knowledge. And to knowledge. And, oh, let me back up. And I'm, ta- I'm not talking about intellectual knowledge. It's a different, y'all. I'm talking about the kind of knowledge that comes from God. And, and, and watch this. And to knowledge, what? Patience. And when you talk about patience, let me go and correct you real quick. Because when you talk about this kind of patience or temperance, I'm sorry, yeah, temperance or this patience, what you saying is that to get this kind of patience, I got to go through some stuff. <laughs> The Bible tells in James 1 and 3, the trying of your faith, it work is patience. So when you say, I don't have no patience with this child, that's not the patience I'm talking about. I don't have no patience on this job, that's not the patience I'm talking about. I've been patient all this time and it just seemed like, seemed like uh, I, I, nothing going right. That's not the patience I'm talking about. I'm talking about the patience, the patience of the word of God. I'm talking about biblical patience. He said, I want to add that to you. Then he said, when you get patient, knows how they fall in line. When you get patient, then you, guess what? You get godliness. Because now when you got the patience, you know how to deal with all this ungodly stuff that comes your way. Instead of, watch this. Instead of you cussing it, you'll bless it. <laughs> oh, you ain't hearing what I'm saying right now. The very thing that you deal with, guess what? You'll learn how to deal with it because why? Because you're not walking in real patience. See, godliness, that means, guess what? My godliness about me is going to show up when nobody else is around. Not just when people are around, but when nobody else is around, the godliness that's in me is going to show up. Then it goes on, look at verse 7. It says, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Some of y'all call it what? Love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you, they make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of God. So in other words, so what happens when I get to this place, this is going to bring, it's going to bring the results of a transformed life. Did you hear what I say? When that stuff become a part of me, guess what? The results is a transformed life. What, Pastor, I thought when you get saved, you transform. Yeah, you transform on that level. But when you get these virtues, and you get all these principles that God has for you, he, tra- he take you from, watch this, it's Bible. He take you from faith to faith and from glory to glory. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. If you're still at that same faith, then you're not being transformed in your life. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about uh, transforming from darkness into the light, but I'm trying to tell you transform from one light to another light. That's what I'm telling you. What do you mean one light to another light? A light of faith to a light of glory. That's all I'm telling you to do, y'all. When you get that, you'll know that you're in the right place. Not only that that comes... But your knowledge of God or your knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ will increase. It's number one. Number two. Number one was my attitude. Number two, my addition. Number three, y'all talk about y'all song anointing. That was in my message. My anointing. My anointing. Wait a minute. Hold up. You mean to tell me that I have to be very diligent for me to walk in anointing? Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. Well, I was saved, Pastor. I thought that once I'm saved, I'm anointed. Yes, when you say, you say by the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit. But that doesn't mean that the anointing is being active in your life. 
See, I told, I told you that the inward anointing should bring forth the outwardly anointing. And it takes time for that. Y'all heard me say this before. Salvation is free. But the anointing costs. Let's look at the scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter, verse 31. Look what, look what Paul had to say. He said, I protest by your rejoicing. Don't rejoice because you understand why you're rejoicing. Which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Look what Paul said. I die daily. Ooh. Every last one of us, let me go ahead and go and spill my beans. Every last one of us got something or some things in our life that got to die. Amen. You, you, we hadn't arrived yet. And what Paul said, greatest Paul was, greatest Paul was he knew that he had, there was things in his life that had to die. But it took diligence to come forward. Amen. That's why Paul said, I die daily. This comes through a series of events. Amen. Events that you probably never experienced before, but you will experience it if you're going to walk in the anointing. See, you're not going to be anointed automatically once you get saved. That anointing is not going to take place over your life because you've been saved for a year. This is a consistent walk that takes time to, to, to take time for you to walk in it. You can't go by one storm that you go through. Hello? You can't go by a couple of storms that you go through. Of course, that is good that you go through certain storms, but that does not trigger, watch this, y'all, that doesn't trigger the anointing over your life. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed that. That was a, that was a, so you got to know when to, you, you got to know when to shout. I said, in other words, I'm trying to trigger the anointing over my life, but there are a series of events that are going to have to come towards my life. And every time I, I, I'm faced with the event, God's going to see if I can overcome that event. Watch this. Let me give you an example. Why the anointing is not active over your life. Because you're still dealing with the same thing. Over and over and over. Let me ask you a question. I don't want you to be diligent in that way. That you keep going over and over the same muster all the time. That's not diligent. You, <laughs> you got to get to a place that you have to overcome whatever the event or wherever the storm that is that God has placed in your life, you ought to be saying, or we ought to be saying every day, all right, this, you got, you're going to die today. Wherever it is, every day, you know you. Amen. And some of the places that we need to die in, <laughs> you cannot get off of social media. God. You can have a million dollars right there and your phone right there. And you'll get you'll fake it like you're going to the um, Y'all know what I'm saying? You, you'll make it look like you're going to the money, but you'll you go to that phone. Because you yeah, I know I'm telling the truth. You are addicted to that phone. Don't lose it. Because now you lose it. This is when you are really start. Oh, Lord, Lord, please let me know. Lord, hey, hey, I'm on the phone there. Lord, please help me find the phone. <laughs> if we can get, and look, y'all, y'all don't see it. But that's a tool that the devil using towards the body of Christ. It is. It's the tool that he used. Look, y'all. Look, when, before we had all this social media, guess what? Man, we, we spend more quiet time, more family time. But now you have four people in the same room, and all of them need a neck brace because 
They ain't, they ain't coming for no kind of air. They ain't looking to see if the other person okay. <laughs> Put a neck brace on it. <laughs> being, the, being the same house in the same room for, for hours, you don't hear a conversation or a word come out their mouth. Y'all not going to help me. And if that be the case, then you know that their mind is not on the Lord. I wish I had a praying church right now. And see, we need to, we need to come, we need to get past all these kind of things if we're going to learn how to walk in the anointing. So Paul was really expressing, and he made it plain, y'all. To walk in the anointing, there has to be a willingness in your heart to go through whatever it takes for us to go through. Did you hear me? And by the way, y'all, when you get a willingness of heart to go whatever you got to go through, whatever it takes to go through, guess what? That's the definition of diligence. That you have a willingness of heart, you have a made of mind, that guess what? Whatever it takes. No, I'm, I'm not, you're not talking to a man, you're talking to God. God, listen, God, whatever it takes for me to go through, to walk in this kind of anointing. Listen, y'all. Because, see, the problem is, watch this. The problem is with a lot of the church folks, and I need, I need to put this, y'all. Because, see, yokes in our personal life are not being destroyed because we are not walking in the anointing. Oh, how are you going to try to destroy yokes in other people's lives when you got yokes in your own life? See, when you're not walking in that anointing, guess what? That means that there, there's things in my life that needs to be destroyed. And because I'm not walking in it, I'm still dealing with that same monster. Oh, y'all hear me? We got to, brother, I'm going to pray for you. No. Pray for yourself. Because you got stuff over your life that need to be broken. Why well, I'm going to let you pray on me. I want you to release. Y'all going to help me in this house. You ain't going to release your burdens and stuff on me. Pray, y'all, see, y'all got to be careful who you ask to pray for you. Uh, y'all, nah, no, brother. No, that, no, no. Keep your prayers to yourself. Because I, I got enough demons on this side that I'm dealing with. And I don't need to deal with your demon. But if we get to the. Y'all going to help me in this house. We get to the place and say, you know what? I got to get to that place of the anointing. For these yokes to be destroyed in my life. I've been saved and sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And speaking in tongues. And yet I still got yokes in my life. I need to find out what is going wrong. Lay hands on other folks, they get delivered. And then you be worse, you be like this. <laughs> you, 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 bro, what's wrong with you, man? I don't know. I just seen like I picked up something. I went to pray for Sister So and so and I came out that cripple. <laughs> no, no. I need yokes destroyed in my life. And let me conclude by saying this. Number one, my attitude. Number two, my addition. Number three, my anointing. Number four, my asking. Mm. My asking. This is powerful. I seeked out this point. I'm going to read it from the new NLT. New Life Translation. That's what I'm reading from. New Life Translation. Look what it's saying. It says, because this is diligence. Keep on asking. Go ahead and slide it. I see. Go ahead and highlight that. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. That sounds like diligence to me. Keep on asking. Mm. Could I go there for a second? How many of you get tired of asking sometimes? <laughs> Matter of fact, not only asking God, but asking people. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what do you mean, Pastor? Man, every, I've been asking this person all this. For, I keep on asking this person. I ain't going to keep on asking. Guess what? Keep on. He ain't helping me in this house right now. 
wait, wait, hold on. Because I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to natural man right now. You, you keep on asking that person for something that you, because the reason that you're asking that person for what you're asking that person for because you desire what he has or what she has. And you stop asking, then guess what? You can stop your blessing. Because the moment you say, watch this, I'm a, I ain't asking no more. Guess what? Your next ask, A-S-K, can be your breakthrough. See, I got to say that because I know some folks, some of y'all might be way over there in, in <laughs> Japan somewhere. <laughs> your, your next A-S-K can be your breakthrough. And the devil want to cheer you on to stop asking. The same thing works with God. The scriptures say, keep on asking. You know, there was a time, you know, we used to say, you know, and I've said it before too. I taught this before until I learned better. If you pray one time about something, then you, you just, you know, leave it alone. Because if you ask a second time, that's a lack of faith. No, it's not. That's not biblical. You got to keep on asking until you, watch this, y'all. He said, keep on asking. Watch this. Keep on asking. And what will happen if you keep on asking? <laughs> yeah, y'all missed that. If I keep on asking God for something, and I know you say, I've been asking God for this for five years. Let me encourage you and say, keep on asking. If it takes five more years, keep on asking God. Because he didn't give you a time frame on when he's going to answer it. He didn't give us a time frame on when you're going to receive. He just told us, keep on asking. See, you got to stop playing God Jr. Well, I ain't got to ask no more. I'm going to stop asking. You got to stop playing. You can't play that role because God is the only one that can play that role. God knows when he's going to, God knows when he's going to answer your question. Are you hearing me? Keep on asking. Even when it hurts. Don't feel right. Want to throw in the towel. Every last one of us wanted to do this. Matter of fact, most pastors, <laughs> thank you, Jimmy. Most, look at you, you know. Most, most pastors, most pastors want to throw in the towel 10 to 15 times a day. Yeah, much more than a month. And you got to get to a place that, you know what? Okay, God. And listen, why are you asking? Don't give up on your hope. In your prayer, if it sounds redundant, that you're saying the same thing, oh, you're asking God for the same thing, keep on asking. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How long you been praying that prayer? Brother, I've been praying this prayer for five years, and God hadn't asked yet, but I'm not, he hadn't answered yet, but I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm coming to tell you, you got to get a bulldog type of faith to say, I am not going to let it go until God bless me. You got to get that Jacob mentality. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, and I'm not going to let go. I'm going to keep on asking. And folks say, you, you, you might as well stop asking. You say, no, I'm not going to stop asking because why? Because it, it may come to fruition on my next ASK. You want a wife? Keep on asking. Because why? It may not take place when you want it to. But that'd be a process because God is trying to develop you to be the right kind of husband for the wife. Oh, I'm going to go back over here, y'all. And it may take a long time for you to get to that place. You want a husband? <laughs> First thing, comb your hair. Because <laughs> they can be coming your way and say, oh. <laughs> you want a God and look you got to be specific you want a godly husband put on some clothes 
I, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to video. I'm going to do this. I'm clean. I'm calm. I'm collected. See, keep on asking because watch this. Because the story goes on about this lady was praying for her husband to get saved. She never stopped praying to finally, watch this, y'all, to finally after 20 years, she was sitting in the church. This is a true story. After 20 years, and she saw her husband, not only that he came in the church, went right to the altar. See, y'all, 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 look, what, look, look you, you can't give up. You got children that's not saved, don't give up on them. Because guess what? Because somebody prayed for you to get saved, and they didn't give up on you. You don't give up on your children. You got spouses not saved, don't give up on your spouse. Keep on praying. So the four F, keeping, keep on asking. Number one, when I ask, number one, ask in faith. That's number one. You ask in faith. Because the reason why it may not be coming to fruition is because you're not asking in faith. Number two, while I'm asking in faith, let me continue to focus on the task before me. Faith and I focus. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on the task before me. What is the task? Whatever you praying and asking God for. Don't go over and la 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 land. Stay there. Pray. Faith. That's right. <laughs> then number three, follow through. I'm following through my prayers by keep asking the same prayer. And number four, four of my fellowship with God. Faith was number two. Was number two. Focus was number three. Follow through and was number four. Fellowship. That's my closure right now. That if I'm going to walk in diligence, I would never tell you that it's going to be an easy walk. I never tell you that it's going to be easy. I'm, listen, we are not put here for things to be easy as followers of Christ. Matter of fact, Keith, could you give me a little soft music? Matter of fact, or, so, or somebody give me some soft music. Matter of fact, is always the opposite. You look for it. If it comes easy, it didn't come from God. But it comes hard. It comes from God because you have to trust him when it don't even look right. You hear today. Yeah. You can't get to the point that it don't feel right. Diligence is not a feeling. It's a principle, and it's a function of God. <laughs> what was crazy about it, the scripture come to mind when after Jesus had resurrected and all that, and Peter and him went back to fishing. <laughs> this is going to bless some of y'all. They had a net on one side of the boat. And they tall and fish all, they go to word again, night long. And Jesus, and I'm going to speed it up. Jesus said, this is what Jesus said, and I'm saying to y'all. He told them to throw the net on the other side. Mm. I'm saying to you, even through your toil, you got to learn, listen, you got to learn how to try something different. Throw your net on the other side of your boat. Because, see, the Lord telling y'all, telling y'all, telling, telling y'all this today. Because what's on the side that you are toiling on, there's nothing there. It's just that close to you. 
just throw it on the other side of the boat. Wait a minute, hold on for a second. Was that, was that a gate under that boat, the reason why them fishers couldn't go, couldn't, you know what I'm saying, the fishers couldn't, uh, you know, come from that side? Y'all missed this. Change your mindset. I gave you a command, change your mindset. Don't you sit there. I dare you to sit there and argue with me and say, well, Peter, shut your big mouth. Well, we've been doing this all night long. Ain't nothing going to happen. No, you missed the point. Throw it over. You want to see what I just saw in the Holy the Spirit? That wall that was under their boat. <laughs> The moment that they threw the net over is the moment the wall move out the way. Y'all not helping me. Because see, the scripture never say where the fishes came from. They could have came from that same side that they was taller on. But they had to be obedient. Come on, stand to your feet. Diligence. 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 The sad picture that I, I, I just, the sad, the sad news that I have to share with you all today is that people of the faith that Jesus Christ are dropping out of the race. They have lost their diligence to keep on keeping on. Some people have been running the race. But you don't run the race like you're running a, mar- uh, like you're running a marathon, uh, running a 100-yard dash. You run the race like you're running a marathon. You have to pace yourself. People... I'm talking about even up until this day that have been walking with the Lord for years. They are throwing in the towel because they can't handle it no more. Y'all hear me, y'all? People are turning away and walking away at this time, but the Bible is going to fulfill itself. As the days are Noah, we are experiencing right now. I run this, I've learned how to run this race with biblical patience. I trust you, Lord. I can't understand why people, they're not changing. But that's not for me to understand. Because I can't change them, only you can change them, God. They're walking, they're throwing in the towels. You know, we call it backsliding. People are backsliding. We are in the first phase, I believe, of the second coming of Christ. They're they're falling away. I'm going to fall away. And listen, please hear me when I say this. They're physically, Jimmy, in the church, but they've been gone. I'm going to say it again. I want you all to hear what I've got to say. They're physically coming to church consistently, but they've been gone. Been gone. They have no intention. What do you mean, Pastor? I'm going to help somebody. What do you mean, Pastor? They have no intentions on doing anything that's taught through the Word of God. No attention at all. Gone. Been gone. Don't care. I see it here at New Faith. I can say that. It's happening here. It's happening, at a, it's happening all around the globe at our churches that people, they're showing up, but they're being checked out. They said to themselves, enough is enough. And they didn't throw it in the towel and they gave it up. And perhaps some of you are here today and say, you know, Pastor, that's me. But the first invitation I want to give is that you can't walk in diligence, biblical diligence until you get saved. So that means if you're not saved, you are already walking in a danger zone. What do you mean a danger zone? Any moment, any time, you can drop to your death. 
And the next time you open your eyes, you'll stand before a God that will judge you into the, the second death. That's the lake of fire. Who in their, I'm going to say it like this, who, because you can't be in your right mind, who in their right mind would take chances like that? It's almost like you'll get on a tightrope, you know, and you got the little pole and you're walking across the Empire State Building to another part of the building, you know. You know, I'm taking a chance. That kind of, that's the kind of way you, chance that you're taking. You're here today. You don't have to. You can stop taking that kind of chances and you can, get, you can make it right with God now. I have to bring up Renata because what I love about Renata every time she came here, when she got taught something and she learned better, she done better. I can say that as a pastor. She got to a point that she did so good that she got to a point that she's ready to go. And there's only a person in their right mind that say, I'm, re- I'm ready. What did Paul say when I minister? For me to live is Christ, but to die. Until you can say that, don't say it. If you ain't ready, don't you say that. The first invitation is salvation. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to state my facts that one day you're going to die. <laughs> what do you mean? You won't die unless the Lord tarries. People of God will be caught up with them that are sleeping in Jesus Christ. And then that's the first resurrection. He said, make sure you get caught up in the first resurrection. Because if you don't get caught up in the first resurrection, the second resurrection is mean that you'll be damned into the lake of fire. When it says narrow gate, I'm going to mess y'all up. When it says narrow gate, it's telling me it's going to be a, it's going to be fewer people that go to heaven than them that go to hell. What do you mean, Pastor? It's going to be more people go to hell than to heaven. I can go all the way back to the first beginning. It was only 12, 12 people. What, 12 was it? What, 10? 8? 8 people that were saved. Noah, his wife, three sons and their, their wives. And guess what? How many people? Probably millions of people that die. I'm telling you right now. If you're here today, you want to join the minority? Or you want to stay with the majority? It's your choice. Well, Pastor, I've been coming to New Faith for a long time. That, that is not what I'm asking you. New Faith is not going to be the one that gets you into heaven. It's going to be your relationship with Jesus Christ. Stop making excuses about uh, you ain't doing it. Stop, 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 stop. We used to say these excuses only satisfy those that make it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop, stop. Because what the devil will do is let you keep on making those excuses. You're going to excuse. Watch this. Watch this. And going to excuse yourself right in the hell. You're here today. This is your opportunity. Because you can die any moment. And if the truth be told, guess what? Somebody just died. Outside of Jesus. Just died. And guess what they didn't, they didn't think? They didn't think they was going to die. And I told someone, I said, when Renata passed away, she didn't know she passed away. But the next time she opened her eyes, it's going to seem like she only been slept overnight. Y'all ain't missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. It's going to seem like she only went to sleep overnight because she's sleeping in Jesus. What you mean? There's no time. There's no time in him. He's eternal. If you're here today and you're ready to make the decision, you, perhaps you may not be ready to make the decision. But I'm going to tell you what not to do. Don't die. If you're looking for a church home, let me tell you right now, few and few, and I say few and very few ministries, churches, is going to preach the unadulterated gospel. Very few. Every time you turn on your radio or turn on your TV and you listen to another ministry, they get far away from the scripture. But new faith, job is to stay right with the word. Y'all getting word every Sunday and every Wednesday. Going once, going twice. Those of you that's watching by Facebook and YouTube, I know that was a number, knows that was a number kept going across your screen. If you call that number within the next 10 to 15 minutes, There'll be someone on the other line that be able to answer 
your question, if you have any questions that you need to be ministered to or you need to be prayed for, there'll be somebody on the other line of that phone to pray for you. We thank you for chiming in with us and we pray that there was something said or done that's going to make your tomorrow that much better. Every heart to mind are clear. Give God a hand praise.